Hey, what's up guys, Rev here. So over the years, I've covered many different topics. However, one thing has become more and more clear over time, and it's a problem that can't be ignored. When it comes to social media, journalism, or just the media in general, there is a very glaring problem, and that is the normalization of hatred directed towards anything from Japanese culture or Japan generally. This is something that has become increasingly normalized on places like Twitter, where racist comments and aggression directed towards Japanese culture and Japanese people is not only being normalized, it is being celebrated. And it's not just being celebrated on social media, it's being celebrated in the media in general. This is a very disturbing trend I want to look at today because there's several topics that I think demonstrate the point that I am trying to make today. But before we get into those, let's hear from today's sponsor. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, the Giga Chads over at Factor have returned to sponsor this video. Use my link or go to go.factor75.com and use code POGREVNOV50 for 50% off your first box. Click the link in the description or scan the QR code with your phone. Now, what is Factor? It is a trusted meal delivery service. They'll save you time and money by bringing pre-made meals directly to your doorstep. Look, you're busy, you have anime girls to look at, dockies to snuggle, and so on and so forth. You don't have time to go to the grocery store. The answer to this dilemma is the convenience that Factor offers as you pick through their dozens of meal options, ready to eat with a simple two-minute cycle in the microwave. I love Factor because they offer not only delicious meals, but also high-protein and diet-conscious meal options for people like me who want to maximize their gains at the gym. Again, use my link or go to go.factor75.com and use code POGREVNOV50 for 50% off your first box. Click the link in the description or scan the QR code with your phone. Thanks again to Factor for sponsoring today's video. Now let's jump back into the content. Welcome back. So today I want to start off this video with some very disturbing developments. Now you might have remembered this hit piece released by Vice News earlier this year. So they released a documentary onto their YouTube channel titled Inside the Pedophilic Manga Industry in Japan. Now yes, hit piece is the right way to describe this because this documentary is an absolute embarrassment. It is not only something that spreads misinformation left and right, it is incredibly biased and it is a hit piece against the manga industry and it paints the whole industry as something predatory. And it also is something that makes a lot of Japanese people look predatory. Now, let's just give some of the greatest hits coming out of this documentary. There's a lot that was wrong with it, but let's hit some of the most major points. Uh, screenshots like this kind of speak for themselves. They were interviewing people who claimed that certain manga panels were a violation of human rights. And who could forget the fact that the star of this documentary, who had more screen time and platforming than anyone else, was a convicted pedophile who used the defense that manga somehow led to his real-life crimes that he committed, even though in the same breath he admitted that he was already attracted to children before he ever even got his first manga copy. And who could forget other things, the, the absolute disingenuous nature of this documentary, where you can see this is a picture, a screenshot from the documentary, blurred out where they are attempting to show that this inside of this manga shop is filled with pornographic material when in reality this is the uncensored version other people have posted where there is absolutely nothing that is anything but safe for work and they use that to try to show this store in a bad light which by the way Filming inside of stores like this without the permission of the business owner is against the law in Japan. And Hanako Montgomery, the director of this documentary, did just that. So she quite literally broke the law in order to make this slanderous portrayal of the inside of this manga shop. Now, making this even worse, when this documentary was released... It was released with the comments turned off. There was quite literally no way to make any sort of critique on this video itself. And worse yet, this video from release was blacklisted in Japan. Now, what does that mean? It does not mean that Japan or Japanese users blocked this slanderous video. It means that the uploader, Vice News in this case, 
selected the option to prevent Japanese users from being able to see this video. Quite literally, not even allowing Japanese citizens to view or criticize a documentary slandering the manga industry. And in addition to that, any re-upload that was uploaded onto Japanese Twitter was swiftly taken down with copyright strikes. And earlier this summer, I shared this news that the director, Hanako Montgomery, announced that they were nominated for an Emmy. Yes, this hit piece was nominated for an Emmy. Well, what happened? They won. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that hit piece on the manga industry was nominated and won for Documentary of the Year. They quite literally released a hit piece, a bad faith hit piece, platforming pedophiles, using them as the star witness, spreading misinformation about U.S. and Japanese law, breaking the law in the process of misrepresenting the inside of manga shops, and this documentary won. That should be something that stuns you. This should offend you on so many levels. It is an absolute disgrace. This is modern journalism in a nutshell. You can make the most unethical documentary, and apparently if it's slandering and, har slandering and misportraying aspects of Japanese culture, it's going to be celebrated and given a stamp of approval on really one of the highest levels possible in journalism. This is a very disturbing development, and I, it's beyond disappointing, but it's sad that it's not that surprising. And I think this normalization of hit pieces and negativity unfairly directed towards Japanese people is something that's not just in the media, it's pervasive on places like social media. I want to start off with a more benign example before we get into some, some heavier stuff. There is a green text here posted on Twitter. A lot of people supported this tweet. So it's captioned, a non fell for weeb propaganda. And this caption, weeb propaganda, is very interesting to look at here. So reading the actual green text itself, it says, get a job offer in Japan, pays well in good conditions. Think all the weebs surely can't be wrong and decide to, to, decide to take it. Move to Japan, fun for a while, two years now. Traveling around temples and shrines that all look the same is no longer exciting. Salary is worthless abroad due to weak yen. Struggling socially because it's nearly difficult to it's nearly difficult to form any kind of connection or relationship with people. 99% of people have a brainless insectoid attitude towards virtually everything in life and do not form own opinions. Local food got boring as F. Girls are very cute but also offensively vapid. Yeah, I'm thinking it wasn't as good as 4chan told me. This is not a piece of weeb propaganda. This is a classic case of the grass always being greener on the other side. You saw another culture and then you thought, well, because it's different, it's going to be exciting. And then eventually you get used to it and then you get bored. This can happen anywhere. This isn't a Japan specific thing. And also moving to a place like Japan and what appears not being able to speak the language, well, you're kind of setting yourself up for failure. And also this idea that everything's so unique. Uh, people are going to be a problem anywhere you go. There's nothing unique in this situation. But this idea of weeb propaganda being the centerpiece of this whole thing and getting support on social media is a good starting point for some further conversation. So I saw this TikTok being shared, and I think this is important because the reaction to this was well very very aggressive so let's play a little bit of this tiktok and see some of the reaction us can learn from japan people waiting patiently suitcases waiting patiently trash bags waiting patiently trash bags with nets to prevent rats please learn new york city on time trains fast trains reversible seats on trains barriers to prevent train deaths please learn america Toilets that greet you, toilets with instructions, toilets that are public and clean, less chance of getting murdered. Please learn. So obviously some of the points are a bit exaggerated for the sake of the video, but there are some legitimate points being made. Now, how did people react to this TikTok? Well, I'm going to show one 
response that kind of sums up all the hostility that this gathered. So this person says, Japan has the most perverted men alive. I feel sorry for the women who had to live with their harassment and pedophilia. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, xenophobic. This is a blatantly xenophobic tweet with absolutely no basis in reality. And it's slandering and attacking an entire group of people and framing them as pedophiles. Now, why would they say this? Well, I have absolutely no idea, but social media is going to praise it. And that's exactly what they did until eventually this person got enough heat to delete their tweets. And also the painful irony of tweeting this with that profile picture is just, it's kind of poetic. But moving on, here's another example of something being completely benign. Something coming out of Japanese culture and getting absolutely attacked by many people. So, as you guys know, with uh, Shigeru Ui, uh, her... Lolly God Requiem Dance is going across many different ads. Companies are using it to sell many different things, including Lamborghinis, perhaps. So we have another one posted on the Twitter being shared saying, Wake up, honey, new car advertisement strategy just dropped. Now, how do you think the quote retweets are going to respond to this completely innocent ad? Uh, well, they're going to get very, very racist and aggressive. So here's one tweet saying they want pedophiles to buy supercars which of course is slandering not only Shigeru Ui, but also any, anyone who's a fan of her. Uh, this one's saying, oh man, one big order of these babies from Epstein coming right up because uh, Jeffrey Epstein apparently has something to do with a, a VTuber, which is absolutely insane. They're trying to tap into that pedophile demographic, I see. Terrible. Just show the car going fast, then I'll be interested. Not with some effing anime kid, which is uh, very strange. I don't think you're ever going to have to worry about the anime kid being included with the car because I don't think you're ever going to buy a Lamborghini. But anyways, this person says, if I see someone in these cars, they're getting ran off the road. So threats over this very innocent ad. This person said, this made me so angry, like actually steam is coming out of my ears. This person is that angry about seeing an anime character. And as always, it, it slips into something more. This idea we saw with that previous tweet we looked at where someone was basically claiming the entirety of the Japanese population, in particular men, are predators. And then we see this drop. And just like anything else that has to do with anime or VTubers, Immediately, it's associated with pedophilia and Jeffrey Epstein and stuff like that. And these people are just going full mask off. Now, I wanted to end with one final thing here. This is absolutely crazy. So it's comparing the creator of SpongeBob with the creator of Dragon Ball. And this person with 11,000 likes says, comparing the guy who made the greatest cartoon of our time to that racist, misogynistic, washed up old man is wild and this is presented with no evidence to support any of that and you know what social media does it gobbles it up because it fits their narrative of hating on something that is japanese and it's happening over and over again and it's only getting worse and it's completely normalized we're beyond normalized at this point it is free clout if you attack something that is relating to anime it's relating to vtubing it's related to Japanese culture or anything that extends from that that is a free shot you attack something like that you slander it You're gonna get a lot of support on Twitter and it just keeps happening and I don't know Are these people gonna one day wake up? I'm not sure but that's gonna do it for this video I wanted to share these uh, these examples because I think it's a pretty important conversation So please feel free to share all of your thoughts about today's topics in the comment section down below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time